Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Nine-month-old internal organs damage in Norwood gun attack. A nine-month-old girl who suffered damage to her internal organs and her arm is now fatherless after Margin Conman opened fire in Norwood St. James Wednesday night. Her father is one of two men fatally shot. Three men were injured. The shooting comes despite an active zone of special operations Zozo in the community and St. James being placed under a state of public emergency since Tuesday. The dead men have been identified as 31-year-old Delano Christie, the child's father, and 26-year-old Jordan Brown. The child was with her father as the adults enjoy a game of Ludi at the Hazard Street shop. When two men approached the unsuspecting group and opened fire, the incident occurred about 8.15 p.m. Councilor Joshua Cummins, Jamaica Labour Party Nauru Division, described the attack as terrible and heartrending. He is concerned that violence by some individuals continue to paint a bad impression of the community. We are very much uncomfortable with what is happening. It cannot be that you are in a space where people have the perception that this community is a violent community and then the vast majority of the people are working class people, law-abiding citizens, he pointed out. He wants the police to do more. The police need to be aware, more alert, need to be more serious about the policing, he remarked following the incident. However, a lawman who spoke on condition that he is not identified said patrols have been beefing up the era and despite a recent uptake, there has been a reduction in murders overall. He explained the long-standing tension within at least four years has again resurfaced. Two weeks ago, two men were found dead in a house on Jones Street about 200 meters from Wednesday night's attack. After the Jones Street incident, a curfew was declared in the community as the security forces stepped up their presence in the area and also limited the movement of individuals. However, despite all that, criminals continue to plague Norwood and residents are visibly afraid. Me ban and go peso, ban Haka Street, and me have two data. To how me see things are going right now, me afraid to see me youth them at the street and send them to school. Me afraid to carry them, one man lamented. He declined to provide his name. Me afraid right now, in a me own a place, where me ban and go. Me want more police in the place, Police who can socialize with everybody would be better for me right now, he added. Another man said that he has been saddened by the continual violence that has left several of his friends dead. Most of the youth them pass off and I'm a friend them, close friend them from day one. The whole of we grew up in the community, me feel it for the youth them, he said. Stop suspending and expelling children from school. Director of Safety and Security in Schools, Richard Chub, says, there needs to be a review of the use of suspension and expulsion of school children as a means of discipline. The call comes amid concern from the police about children who are out of school being at greater risk of being recruited by gangs. During Wednesday's anti-gang town hall, hosted by the Education Ministry, Detective Inspector Clifton Green of CTOC pointed to truancy, suspensions and expulsions as factors enabling gang activities. We have seen the persons trafficking, well, transporting weapons on behalf of the groups, acting as lookouts, things like those. I actually had a conversation with somebody who is indicating that in a particular community, the youngsters are put forward by a particular gang leader, you know, for the purpose of early warning systems and so on. So it means, therefore, that they're exposed to weaponry, they're exposed to all the ills that a gang brings to bear on a community. Some of the challenges, too, include truancy, yes, and that is one of the main things, and I am happy that the Ministry of Education is represented as a stakeholder because coupled with that is sometimes when the students are expelled or suspended, therein lies the opportunity for him or her to be drafted into this monster, and the, the unscrupulous ones sit on the corner and observe. Mr. Chubb said another way must be found to discipline children. Clearly, as a school community, as a Ministry of Education, we now need to use data to inform evidence-based intervention. Clearly, we have to rethink this position of suspensions and expulsions because we suspend and expel our children. It cannot be used as a, a key source of managing behavior. Yes, we have to find another way. Clearly, we have to help our children to understand how to manage conflict. JUTC pursuing new measures to combat flood theft at depots. The Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, said it is pursuing new measures to combat flood theft at its depots. 
Speaking at Windsor's Public Administration and Appropriations Committee, PAAC, Managing Director of the JUTC, Paul Abrams, noted that the theft of fluid has been happening for more than two decades. He said the thieves used innovative ways to carry out the theft. Mr. Abrams said the company has implemented a tracking system that has led to some reduction in fuel loss to theft. He noted that the police quack a fuel stealing ring recently and those involved are awaiting prosecution, while noting that the company is looking into new technology to assist in further reduction of theft. We discovered the other day that what they do now is they will open the inspection plate and they will tie the float valve to make it look like it's full. So when the bus is leaving in the depot, the fuel gauge will register full. And then within an hour and a half, the bus is, is, um, is out of fuel. So what we've had to do now is to, to go through all the buses and reseal and come up with a system that they cannot get access to the fuel sending area. All of this is a, a critical administrative issue because you don't have the time in the mornings or in the evenings to do all of those inspections when you're trying to get buses out to commuters. So what we're doing right now is we have done a chart in which we have looked at certain buses that seem to replicate themselves shutting down. And what we do now is we are targeting those buses and we have seen a significant reduction in the buses that were running out of fuel prior. We are, we are cognizant of what we have to do and we are trying our most best to figure out. We are looking at a system right now, um, a system in which we, are, we want to test some buses with a, a system that records the, the massive drop in fuel after a selected burn rate and alert to us immediately. But you, you need to, we need to understand that the JUTC cannot monitor fuel theft with, with human control. Senator Langmore calls for an increase in public campaigns on drug awareness. Government Senator Dr. Langmore says there is a greater need to maintain the increase of public education campaign against substance and drug abuse. November is celebrated as Drug Awareness Month. Speaking on Thursday in the Upper House, Senator Langmore pointed to the increase in drug and substance abuse within the population, especially among adolescents and young adults. She said outside of the common substances and drugs, she was shocked to know that there has been an increase in the use of heroin. As such, she said the government and stakeholders must focus on maintaining an increase in the public education campaign for drug awareness. She said after November, these steps and initiatives must continue. She said studies indicate that 80% of children claim to be involved in alcohol, use or exposure to alcohol before the age of 14. Meanwhile, she noted that marijuana use is at 13% among the nation's youth, which she believes has gone up since it was discriminalized in 2015. We need to increase and maintain, maintain and increase rather, our public education campaign, especially to our at-risk populations, our young people, and persons who have had particularly predisposition to trauma, what we call the adverse childhood experiences. Unfortunately, this is one of the reasons persons turn to substance use, where they're seeking to heal themselves or overcome or even numb that broken spirit that would have been damaged through a traumatic experience. 14 trade unions sign compensation agreement with government. 14 trade unions have signed agreements with the finance minister for the new reconstructed public sector compensation system. The agreements were signed between Tuesday and Thursdays. The finance minister says it reached agreement with a number of major public sector trade unions, including the majority of the unions in the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions. The unions include the Nurses Association of Jamaica, Jamaica Civil Service Association, the Jamaica Workers' Union, the Union of Schools Agricultural and Alliant Work Union, the Union of Public and Private Employees, the Jamaica Association of Local Government Officers, the Jamaica Midwives Association, the Council of Paramedics, and the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union. These unions represent approximately 60,000 employees. Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark says this is a momentous development given the four years of work that has gone into designing the new compensation system and the extensive period of consultation with unions. He states that the journey began in 2018 and was undertaken in partnership with unions which agreed to a four-year wage deal that allowed the work to commence. Dr. Clark added, 
that it is a watershed moment as the government seeks to transform the public sector into a modern public service. He reiterates that the current compensation system does not serve the needs of the public sector nor of the country as a whole. He is urging the unions to review the government's proposal to complete that review in short order. Dr. Clark notes that it is the government's commitment to implement a public sector compensation that is fair, transparent, and sustainable, whilst emphasizing that every public ser service worker will be better off financially when the new system is implemented. The new compensation system will be implemented over three years with an effective date of April 1, 2022 and will cost approximately $120 billion over the period. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.